That voice there being uh, that of the Berkeley County Commission President, Jim Whitaker. Jim, good morning to you. Hey, good morning, and uh, excuse the uh, the singing voice because I do not have one. So. <laughs> well, you know what? That's okay, too. No, that's good. Thank right? you. Uh, condolences to you on the uh, passing of your father. I think uh, you mentioned you had an aunt. That, uh, yeah, his older sister passed 10 days before he did, And um, but, yep. Uh, Katie Fry was her name. So my condolence, well, to the to the, my cousins and also to Tony Petrucci and the loss of his father here recently. So it has been uh, an a, a overwhelming week of some emotions. That's sure. for sure. So, but thank you. Absolutely. Did you want to say a word about your dad, Jim? If, if it's up to you. Uh, uh, you know, uh, lifelong resident of Berkeley County. Uh, he he actually was born in Gainesboro, West Virginia, in a house that still borders his home place up there uh, in, in May the 8th, 1930. And it's kind of a an ironic story that the doctor came to the house to deliver him and charged $35 for a delivery. And dad, or his dad, or my grandfather, had the check and gave it to my dad that said that this is what it costs to bring you into the world. <laughs> my dad saved the check that I think he wrote to Dr. Hamilton and gave it to me and mine was three hundred and fifty dollars. About so, ten times. About ten times the amount, and that was from nineteen thirty to nineteen sixty-two. So, wow. but yeah, those uh, those are the kind of things my dad would uh, would uh, would hold on to him and uh, and memorialize himself. And, mm -hmm. But he was a great man, um, a wonderful father, son, uh, husband. I just uh, I'm, I'm going to miss him dearly. That's for sure. Well, those are some very nice words, mm -hmm. and uh, again, our condolences Thank to you. you. Jim, I'm sure the entire community echoes the same. Thank you. Yeah, I think uh, I don't know anybody who doesn't consider you a gentleman. Well, that's those are very kind words, but uh, I'm sure there's a couple of them out there that uh, <laughs> that would probably beg to differ. But Bill's one uh, of them, but he won't no, say no, it on no, air. No, no, no. <laughs> no I, I was going to echo exactly what Rob uh -huh. said. Uh, you are. I've never. The uh, uh, chief, Martinsburg chiefs, another day, and I made some comment. I never heard him say a bad thing about anyone. I'm going to extend the same thing to you, Jim. I'd, I've never heard you say a bad thing about anyone. As a consequence, everybody thinks very highly of you. Well, so, thank you yeah. all. That, that those are very, very kind mm -hmm. words, and 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 you know, I'll I'll give a lot of that to uh, to my family, especially my mom. My mom always said, if you don't have anything nice to say about somebody, don't say anything at all. Mm -hmm. And uh, and you know, God rest her soul too. So. Uh, I miss my family, and you know you're never truly an adult until you lose your parents, and right. now you're an orphan. So, yes, just, just to put a little smile with it, that, uh, and especially the remaining parent. Yes, the first one you can, it hurts, yes. but it's the when you lose the last one hurts most. It is, and uh, I I have to give accolades to uh, Harmony where he was uh, a, a resident there. The girls uh, and the guys they took wonderful care of him. Uh, hospice was uh, was was a godsend, mm -hmm. and, they are I can, and I cannot say enough about the care that he was given uh, in his final days. He was very comfortable um, and at peace. So, and I was able to to spend you know that that last moment with him. So. And that's a big thing. If you can pass without being in pain mm -hmm. for the last yeah. few months, uh, last few days, not yeah. been in pain. Uh, as if he was in pain, he did not show it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. He was a strong man up until the end. Yeah. But, yeah, miss him, love him, as always. Very very good words. Very mm -hmm. nice. And I know uh, our audience members on Facebook uh, extend their uh, thoughts, prayers to your family as well as Patricia family, uh, too. So Thank you. Thank you very much. Absolutely. Uh, Jim, uh, let's talk about the commission meeting can we call you guys a commission yet or is that to have to wait till a certain it, date well we're still getting the finalization it is in the paperwork uh i think it's not until june the 20 let's let's gonna let's go ahead and start because the transition's gonna happen and, mm -hmm. and there's gonna be some uh, we we've been stumbling over that word for 10 years now or yeah. better so uh, let's let's just 13. start saying, 13 <laughs> let's, <laughs> let's just say commission yeah that would be great uh, I, I do know the formality is is that uh, i think there was a uh, the discrepancy that it might have to have been a constitutional amendment yeah. but it wasn't a constitutional amendment to become a council right if i remember correctly so right. i think that has uh, since gone by the wayside but if i remember right on my read ahead uh, yesterday in our uh, legislative follow-up with summer barrett that we um uh we will have the official title after sort of our own vote on the council soon to be commissioned 
uh, here in the next uh, next few uh, few months. I so. think the holdup was someone said you had to have a referendum to change the name. That because, is correct. Yeah, yeah. As opposed to constitutional yeah. amendment. Yeah. Yeah. Jim, let's talk about the summary that summer uh, provided yesterday. I was watching the county council mm-hmm. meeting. We air it obviously here on Channel Ten uh, Thursdays at ten after the program ends. And she gave a pretty thorough presentation, much like she did on this show, Mm -hmm. of the work that she does on behalf of the county. And there are some around the area, some in our audience, uh, who question the value of that contract on the program. She explained it dollar for dollar and otherwise uh, why it's valuable. You had a chance to hear the details again yesterday. And throughout the term of this contract, you helped vote on it and, and approve it, and you've gotten the statements each year from summer about uh, the value of it yes yes indeed the uh, the initial cost of course it you know when you're talking thousands of dollars that you're spending of taxpayers money but the return was uh, over the period of uh, I think the next three or four years will be millions of dollars in returns mm-hmm. uh, one being the transfer tax of um, Oh, Mike, help me out real here. Estate, real estate yeah. transfer. John Hardy bill. John, John, Hardy, John Hardy bill, bill. Right. and I mean John was a was a workhorse behind that, getting it uh, implemented, getting it started, and and getting it pushed through to the end. Uh, the other one I think that um, almost lost the traction was the regional jail bill. After there was some um, misunderstandings of the formulation of how that was going to you know implement or be implemented in other counties put a fear in a lot of the uh, the commissioners but i think it was uh was worked through with due diligence and and summer worked hard on that to to explain that the uh, that the formula was was to benefit the counties and uh we have been very fortunate with our uh, our abilities to uh, uh of our day report program and alternate sentencing um with the uh, with the help of the judges the magistrates to uh to give the, the the ones that have made just bad decisions, not uh, not criminally or, or harmful um, uh, crimes, but giving them a chance to stay with their families, continue to provide for their families, keep them as a whole unit, and give them a, a hand up, not a handout. Mm-hmm. And uh, so we uh, we have been very very fortunate with that that group with Tim Zaya. He does a wonderful program uh, with with all of his uh, his endeavors there. Uh, Mike, you're a delegate. Uh, before you were a delegate, I know you raised an eyebrow when this contract was signed. You've had a chance to see how this works from outside as a uh, resident of Berkeley County and now as a delegate in the city of Charleston working in the chambers. What are your thoughts on this contract at this point? Well, I was. I was. I don't know that I was a, a proponent of, of this when it first happened, I thought uh, this was a lot of money, the, of taxpayer money, uh, to go down there. But, again, I didn't really understand the system. I think that's sort of where it comes from. You don't understand the system. I hear a lot of people say, well, we elect commissioners. Why aren't they going down and speaking on our behalf? Well, commissioners aren't going to go down for 60 days and and advocate uh, on their behalf um, because they have other jobs, mm-hmm. and um, they have to be up here to run the county uh, on a day-to-day basis, so they, they just can't. Um, and then you have to decide, well, what's your return on investment? You know, If you're spending that kind of money, are you getting a return, and are you getting a return that you would not have gotten uh, anyway? Um, I've heard other people say that the delegates should be taking care of that. Well, delegates have, you know, upwards of 4,000 bills they have to read. They can't focus just on Berkeley County issues. They have to focus on all of the issues. Um, I will say that there there absolutely was a return on your investment um, in, in this particular session, and I saw it firsthand. There were bills that affected Berkeley County um, that would not have made it across the finish line if it had not been for Summer Barrett and Daniel Hall. Mm -hmm. Um, And they are two of the most effective lobbyists in Charleston. So um, if you're going to pick a lobbyist, those two are the ones you want to have on your side. They are are in the House and the Senate every day lobbying on behalf of their clients. So there were there was very few days I didn't see one of them in the Capitol. Um, speaking on behalf many times of Berkeley County. 
We're fortunate this year with um, uh, Commissioner Catlett as well as Commissioner Gokenauer, as well as H.D. Boyd, uh, Commissioner. He um, he has been able to make several trips to Charleston, and with uh, the, the aid of Summer and Daniel, um, they were given the path to lead in to, you know, to have these discussions with the elected officials. So, you know, with that um, that avenue that we had or, or that contact we have in Charleston really got the uh, the voices heard from the Eastern Panhandle. The, the, the hard part is, I know for every delegate that's elected, is that there's 55 other or 54 other counties besides Berkeley that it may affect them sure. on, on a decision just for Berkeley County. And I know, um, if I'm not mistaken, when the bill was written for us to be able to go to five county councilmen, that we would be sort of a standalone little island of our of, of, of our own demise that certain bills could be written to help out a, a council versus the whole commissions of the state. It never really matured that I thought to the effect that it should have, uh, or maybe it just couldn't. But um, but with that being said, we uh, we were able to uh, to to move a lot a lot of things across the finish line and. And now we're, I think a lot of them are still sitting on the governor's desk. I think he's in favor of signing most of them. Uh, what he doesn't sign, I think, usually comes in effect after a certain date, and we get to move on from there. So you know, and I'm, I'm glad you mentioned the other commissioners and, and the fact that they did make that trip to Charleston, mm -hmm. and uh, I thought they were pretty effective. And I know you have this rule where three of you can't meet in the mm -hmm. same room without, you know. Breaking the sunshine. So, right. Yeah. Um, so I, there were times I know um, – um, uh, Summer was meeting with a, a couple of them, and, and then some of us other legislators met with H.D. Boyd separately. And I know there were a lot of meetings they had when they were down there that um, – I talked to HD while he was down there, and he he told me the list of meetings he had set up with with different individuals within the legislator legislature and within uh, the the governor's office and and secretaries and so on and so yeah. forth. So um, I thought he was very busy while he was down there, and and Steve and Eddie both were very busy while they were down there. So, but they're only down there for a short period of time, and then you have to let your lobbyists take over from there. Right. Uh, and I think that's what happened. And I have to give kudos to Eddie as my vice chairman for the for the commission or mm -hmm. council. Uh, he has a, I don't want to say has more free time than what I do, but he has been able to fulfill some roles that uh, were my work. And my, you know, I still have to go out and make a paycheck sure. as, as well as everybody else at, at, in, in my age group. Um, but I want to give accolades actually to all other four of my commissioners. They, uh, they have really, really um, helped us, or helped me out, you know, getting through a well, little difficult time here I've had the last couple of weeks. And um, But, again, I want to thank them personally for, for all their help and in, in helping see me as their, as their president of the commission. Um, not that they've made it any easier for me, but they have, made <laughs> it, they have really, uh, really helped me out, and I want to personally thank them for that. Bill? Yeah, I thought I think my, uh, Mike used the operative term a while ago. Uh, what would have not happened if it had not been for Summer and Dad? We hear the numbers floated around. You used a couple uh, used a couple minutes ago. Um, millions of dollars being saved. Uh, some of that would have happened with a natural course of events, uh, and and we accept that. Uh, but what I've not heard and what I would appreciate, and I think others in the audience as well, are those bills that would not have happened except for the direct involvement of Summer and Dan. And, and, and I'm sure there's quite a few. Uh, but that is, that's the message I would like to see, but that's not the message that I have heard. Mm -hmm. I've heard a large number, and that's taken uh, credit for everything. And some of us have said justified, others are probably not justified, but it would have happened anyway. So so I would like to, to me, a more compelling argument would be those bills that were a direct consequence of Summer and Dan. Yeah. Uh, one of them, I would say the, the consequence of, of it happening was the regional jail bill. Okay. Because that one, if I remember right in the read ahead from Summer, which she presented to us, 
there would have been an additional cost of over five hundred and forty four thousand mm-hmm. dollars um i think in berkeley county alone to the regional jail cost so we so, had we have as well as you yeah, know bill yeah. we have really worked hard yeah. to to diminish as much as we can of that bill and then there's some regional jails that that haven't even been able to make their payment yeah, and others have not worked as hard as yeah. we have as well. We were not the first to do the uh, uh, the uh, the alternatives, but we got on board fairly early. Yes, we did. Yeah. So we could. You know, it's funny. I'll tell a little story real sure. quick that there was, uh, and I think it may have been the regional jail bill, that there was, you know, because you have relationships with different people, um, there were times I was texting lobbyists and stuff to, within the House, and I, I'm pretty sure it was the regional jail bill that it went through the House and it, it didn't pass. And I just and we're we're late in the session, and I just texted Summer. I said it, it's dead, didn't make it, and she texted back, nothing's dead until Signy die, yeah. and next thing you know, it's coming back from the Senate, it, it and it's got new life. It's been stuck in another bill. It's been uh, combined with something else, and it comes back with new life, and, right. and it passes. So I can tell you, she can make things happen down there. But let me pick up on what you said a second ago, and the regional jail probably saved the county about $500,000. And I vaguely remember, or I think I remember, the uh, the, con- the initial contract was around $200,000, maybe a little bit less now. To me, that would be a compelling argument. With this one bill, we save the county more than we're paying. Uh, then everything else is is an addition to it. That is a much more compelling argument than the fact that we're bringing in millions of dollars. We cannot really we cannot really articulate just how many are a direct consequence of the lobbying effort. But that one case, you can justify. Yes, we sure can. And you know you you resurrected it back to life. I call her sure. the, the I call her the defibrillator because <laughs> <laughs> she was able to get it shocked and, and moving on right. again. So and and there's other bills that you don't know that, that sort of pass um, pretty easily, um, but you don't know how much work behind the scenes that they've done to to make it pass easily, where it could have struggled uh, if it had not been for them. And and the work that they do to the 54 other counties to to show them sure you know I mean that is a task in itself. I mean you get somebody that's removed. And and all everybody always goes to Mingo and Work County and and you know where the the population has been not as great as of course of what Berkeley County is, but to convince those few down there that um, this is this will benefit everybody as a whole, but right now will benefit Berkeley County the most. Mm-hmm. Jim, there's a couple of other lobbying groups been down there for years. Mm-hmm. One the Association of Counties, mm-hmm. another one the County Commission Association. Are uh, I assume both are still active today, but are they as effective as what they have been in times past? I don't want to say that that they're not as effective. I do believe that with um, with Daniel and Summer being there, mm-hmm. they're more in contact to, to let them know. That they, I think they have their hand more on the on the pulse of Berkeley County, and then um, with the Association of Counties and the County Commissioners Association. They are all 55. All 55. Yeah, exactly. I, understand, so, I understand that. Yeah. Yes. Okay. Yeah. So I, th- I think with uh, with that being said, they they come mm-hmm. up to our legislative sure, summits. Yeah. They hear what we have to say, but it's still a hard sell for them to go and say, "Hey, guys, come on, Berkeley County, you know, we're we we are forefront, and we you know we're moving along. We don't we don't try to let too much grass grow underneath our feet. When we see something, we try to make sure that." You know, we at, we attend the situation, we we um, we get the the problem solved, and we move on. In any way you want to cut the proverbial pie, Berkeley County and Mingo County are two different beasts. As, oh my gosh! As, as two as far as the end of the spectrum as you can yeah, probably exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Jim, sometime before the end of November, the commission will have to decide whether they want to renew that contract and continue having uh, their own uh, special lobbyist on behalf of the county. How do you think that's going to go at this point? You know, I do believe that uh, if the vote was taken yesterday and all council or commissioners were there, I think it probably would have passed overwhelmingly because of the uh, of the work that um, uh, strategic um, strategies had, had, had performed for us. Um, but, you know, uh, like I said, I'm one vote. I, I do believe it. Um, it's a lot of money well spent, but the return is greater 
you know, at, by five to tenfold. So. Jim, we've heard that uh, the first year was around 240000 mm-hmm. The second year or third year is probably less. What will it be this coming year? Do you know? Uh, yeah, of course, it, this is the negotiation year for it again. Um, if we if it is put back out to bid, which I think it will, will be, then uh, we will uh, we'll, 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 yeah. we'll address that again. Yeah, sure. So. And I think all that money includes um, their expenses that mm-hmm. they're allowed uh, to, while you're down there. So, and a lot of times, I think I, when I talked to Summer, she said but they didn't come anywhere close to using all the expense mm-hmm. money that they no. could have, so that they didn't use the full budget that they were allotted. So it didn't cost the county. Tell me something, Mike. Was was this session? Do you think it was a little bit more astute to? Um, Certainly, Mike was down there. Yeah, yeah. I mean, <laughs> that, I didn't hear as as much as as um, the um, the after hours, the lobbying meetings that took place. I mean, maybe they were. I just maybe I missed them. But I think a lot of it really took place inside the Capitol building. It wasn't anything that um, that I call that was the I hate to use this word the fluff of after meetings, sure. the, the meets and greets. and um, Well, I, here's the thing. So this is my first session, so mm-hmm. I don't have anything to go on right. uh, from previous sessions. Um, there were there were after hours um, mm-hmm. meet and greets and stuff like that. Um, but there weren't – I wouldn't say there were a whole lot of, of business discussed. Now, a lot of times they were just receptions, and you could come in, and, and they, they didn't talk a whole lot of, uh, of shop during those things. So after you went to two or three, you were like, eh, do, do I really need to go to these things. I, I thought most of the information gathering um, happened at the Capitol. They were coming to your office mm-hmm. asking for time. If you were in your office, they would ask if they could come in. If they could talk to you about issues. You would allow them to come in. And, and, and a lot of times you would you would have one group come in and talk about a, an issue and you know, another group come in and talk about the opposite side of the issue. Mm-hmm. So you were getting both sides of, of issues, and then you sort of had to make a determination uh, on which side of the fence you were on. So uh, that that's how it happened most of the time. And, it, you know, I'm, I'm, I've said this before on your show, Rob, that uh, if I'm given information and, and uh, you're looking for an answer right away, I can probably give you one, but I would rather sit, think about it, try to get a little bit more you know the other side uh, sure. of what would happen you know let's say okay i'll make this decision yeah it makes sense let's do it then all of a sudden you have another group come in behind you and say well look what you just did to us by signing here mm-hmm. you know the memorandums of understanding and when you pass it on to you know i'll, I'll use the fire department the, the fire board you know we have to have a memorandum of understanding through you know the, the volunteer service they see a, a, a different aspect to it than, you know, sort of ours is business. Theirs is a volunteer side of it. Mm-hmm. So, you know, you got to just kind of take that into consideration when you start um, mm-hmm. mandating, um, you know, a volunteer to do something, then they're a non-compensated employee. Sure. So not, you have to not, be careful. Not only volunteer, there's a culture, oh, culture as well, yes. and they want to maintain the culture. Yes, indeed. and that And they should. That culture has been very vital yes. and continue to be vital to the county. Yeah. Very much so, and, and, and my hats go off yeah, to every yeah, one of those yeah. first responders, um, the, the law enforcement, the, uh, the EMS, even our 911 center. Yeah. You know, this is Telecommunicators Week, and, you know, they, they are nationally recognized, and they're headed out to, I think, Denver, Colorado, to receive a prestigious award. And, you know, I, Jen Swisher has done remarkable things in that office. And but she had a good base to build upon. She, yeah, yeah, very good. Yeah, 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 very yeah, started. Yeah. Um, you know, and, and um, oh gosh, um, yeah. it, it's just it's remarkable. Um, we are, uh, I, I'll call us a little bit of a proving ground with positive action mm-hmm. that uh, that we have here in Berkeley County. Jim, I want to thank you for stopping in this morning. Sure. It's always great to see you, even if it's under difficult circumstances at well, times. Again, thank you all for your all's kind words. Mm-hmm. And um, the only thing I can say is I'm going to miss my, my, yeah. my business partner, my dad, and my lifelong friend. Yeah. So, well, God bless, Jim. Thank you. Thank you.